Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. In less than one hour, the first exit polls will grant anxious Israelis a rough idea about the chances for their elected representatives to finally set up a functioning government more than two years after the last stable one fell apart. Ahead of the expected moment, we will attempt to provide a general analysis of Jerusalem's political state of play. To do so, we're joined from the southern Israeli city of Be'er Sheva by Dr. Yonatan Freeman, a political scientist at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Also joining today's panel from the city of Bechemish is former Knesset member Dov Lipman, who is Secretary General of the Confederation of United Zionists. Thank you for joining us as well. Great to be with you. Thank you. And with us here in the studio is our TV7 analyst and TV7's host of uh, Watchmen Talk. Uh, thank you for joining us as well, Mr. Emil Oren. Uh, give us an a overview of the current state of play. Who are the contenders? What are we up against? And uh, where are things expected to head? So you said that uh, people are anxious. Of course, uh, the uh, most anxious are the uh, candidates themselves, especially the heads of the various lists. They are not only anxious, they are in nail-biting anxiety, even though they would have rather beaten each other. But uh, uh, that being so, um, what we had here was a referendum on outgoing prime minister and perhaps incoming prime minister, that remains to be seen, Benjamin Netanyahu. And um, all other agenda items have been shunted aside, uh, both domestic and uh, foreign policy. Even the COVID-19 uh, crisis, um, which is hovering in the background, uh, is not the main item on the agenda. The question is, and this is for mathematicians and statisticians, uh, whether Netanyahu can survive, whether the numbers will give him a 61 um, Knesset member uh, majority, or whether his opponents will be able to put up uh, a coalition of uh, opposites, uh, a broad coalition uh, that even though it goes from left to right and will include people who have been uh, die-hard rivals will this time around manage to topple Netanyahu. Knesset member Lipman, your perspective of the current breakdown, how can we look at the current situation? Well, I think what was just pointed out is really, really important. Even after we see the exit polls, certainly I came from America, I'm used to knowing, oh, there's a winner. Uh, all we're going to have after that is 120 members of Knesset. And then becomes the difficult task of someone amongst those 120 trying to form a government. And as we headed towards this election, we didn't see anyone, not Netanyahu, not his opponents, with any kind of a clear path, according to the polls, towards the 61-seat majority you need to form a government. So we have to remember that we might emerge from this process with no one able to form that government, not in the pro-Netanyahu camp, not on the anti-Netanyahu camp, and that could then lead us on a path towards a fifth election in this cycle. Dr. Freeman, your take on this? Well, I think it really is a referendum, not just if you uh, support Netanyahu or not, but also uh, do you support what he did in the face of this pandemic, face of this threat? I think that many of the individuals who are Netanyahu's opponents criticized them in the beginning, many of them saying he won't get the vaccines, we'll be the last, we won't be the ones who are getting out of this pandemic. So I think uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in terms of the voters. In addition, we've also seen increased uh, campaigns by Netanyahu and his supporters to try to sway the uh, Israeli Arab vote. Uh, and it'll be very interesting to see whether or not many Arab citizens of Israel uh, in the end vote for Netanyahu, vote for his uh, supporters. That could be really a, a major uh, influence on this election. Mr. Owen, about two years ago, we, we sat here in the studio and we started to communicate with our panelists. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Dr. Freeman was also at the time uh, on that same panel. And we voiced concern about the possibility for a political limbo. What we're hearing here is not very different from what has happened over the course of those two years with the fourth and potentially the fifth uh, on the horizon. 
is there a change in, in the political scenery or is it very much uh, of what was uh, up until now? Well, one should uh, break down uh, these last uh, two years into two identical halves. Between March of uh, 2019 and March of 2020, uh, it was almost business as usual, even though it was the first time the Knesset uh, could not uh, find a suitable prime minister because Netanyahu, rather than uh, go back to the president and say, I can't do it, find someone else, um, went another route and uh, called for early elections. But uh, come March of 2020, it all changed because of COVID-19. And because he, uh, Netanyahu's main opponent uh, at the time, Benny Gantz, the head of uh, Blue and White, uh, said that this was reason enough to abandon his main campaign pledge against Netanyahu and join forces with him because of the health uh, and uh, economy uh, crisis. Uh, now, this is no longer true. This, this time around, it is a do or die uh, situation <clears throat> with one, one wild card. And the wild card is President uh, Ruven Rivlin. Under the Israeli system, the uh, presidency is mostly ceremonial. But this is the one time where it can uh, have a lot of substance and significance. If the president decides that uh, he does not see Netanyahu, uh, who is standing trial for corruption, and his uh, trial is about to resume uh, in a week's time or so, a week and a half, if Rivlin says, uh, please, Likud members, send me someone else, I may give him the right of first refusal. He may do that. Uh, he's authorized to do it. I know that Dov Lipman uh, uh, does not agree with me. Uh, he will probably explain his position. But he can do that. And then it will be a whole new ballgame. Well, Knesset member Lipman, uh, here's your chance. Go ahead. Sure, we, we've already been through that that process and the president has made it clear that he's gonna go through the regular process where the various parties come and recommend who they believe should be the prime minister and form a government. And he has ignored the reality of the prime minister being indicted and going on trial. And I believe that that's gonna be the same path that he'll follow here. What's pretty remarkable is that Israelis have known throughout this entire process about the reality of the corruption charges and people People are either in Netanyahu's camp and supporting him regardless, or they're against Netanyahu uh, because of the corruption and other issues. And that's not really playing a major factor in the way these election results will play out. Well, may I interject for a second? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is true that this was what we have seen up to now. However, if Rivlin, who is about to retire in exactly three months, this is his last chance to make a mark on Israeli history. Yes, he may say, I don't want to hurt the uh, position of the president or the presidency itself. I'm not going to, uh, to, uh, to take part in, in any uh, uh, machination here. Nevertheless, he may say, I have heard the voters and they do not want a fifth election. And if I have to choose between two evils, I am choosing the one that Dov, you just mentioned correctly, he has not chosen up to now. So we are at a juncture where if the numbers uh, uh, provide such a, for such a situation, maybe he won't be uh, uh, faced with this uh, choice. Uh, but if he does, he may ask the, the parties, what is your second preference? Yes, you are for Mr. Lapid or Mr. Netanyahu. I understand all that. But if we get into a deadlock, who will be your second choice? And he may find a public way to explain his choice. And that doesn't mean that, that the, the chosen will be able to form a government, only that he will be given the right of first refusal. Knesset Member Lippmann, your reaction? 
just to, to point out that according to the laws and the system, if the people that the president charges which with forming a government, which I 100 percent believe will be the heads of the parties, are not able to do so, at that point, the mandate does go back to the Knesset for a period of time where any one of the 120 at that point can try to form a government. I believe that Rivlin will certainly allow for that process to take place. By the way, I'll just mention that there is a head of one party, Naftali Bennett from the Yamina party, which is a right wing party. I would, some would say even to the right of Netanyahu and Likud, who sees himself as a prime minister candidate, he is banking on that part. So notice we'll have one month of Netanyahu trying to form a government and fail, maybe one month of, of Lapid trying to find a government and fail, and then it goes to the Knesset, and at that point, Bennett sees himself as someone who could try to find 61 and break through and actually form a government. But of course, uh, that's a far way off, and we'll have to see how that plays out. And then uh, we have to see indeed in uh, uh, a few hours' time, we'll start uh, to understand where things are actually standing. But uh, Dr. Freeman, legally speaking, uh, is there a hindrance to, to the president to come and say, no, uh, I demand an alternative to, to the party leader who doesn't necessarily uh, have to be the candidate of each party? I think it's really about what's legal and what's traditional. I think that in the end, uh, we also know that some individuals who are running against Netanyahu claim that after the election, there'll be uh, certain individuals in the parties who will no longer uh, identify with the party. We saw that with a number of individuals in blue and white after the uh, previous elections. So I'm not even sure that after we see these exit polls and see what, what comes about in the Knesset, that uh, all the parties will still be uh, united as they were, and that could also impact uh, Rivlin's uh, decision making. Uh, in addition, this is very important, I think that we also have to see whether or not the individuals who win or lose accept the results. Uh, there are some talks that, like in the United States, uh, we might see some uh, different individuals claiming that the vote wasn't uh, democratic enough, there's corruption, different things. We have to realize that according to the uh, voting apparatus, they say they'll have over 10% of people voting in double envelopes. In other words, envelopes that will take time to uh, count. Uh, she's, she's even saying that it will take time into Passover to count them. So that could also lead to certain parties not even accepting the results. Indeed, Mr. Olin. Well, that's, that's true. Um, the entire system uh, is now under the microscope. What uh, used to be accepted uh, as a given, the sanctity of the process is no longer so. Uh, and uh, people, yes, may uh, charge that uh, the process was rigged one, one way or the other, even though uh, a Supreme Court justice um, always heads the uh, election uh, commission. Uh, but uh, even, even though uh, this is a remote uh, uh, possibility, and we all remember Shimon Peres, who used to cling to this uh, hope of uh, what happens when the, uh, the soldiers in their remote uh, posts, when their vote in, in uh, double envelopes gets here, what happens when, when uh, the merchant mariners uh, of Israel in faraway ports uh, send uh, their votes in, we will, we will get some sense of uh, the results shortly. But one should also add, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Dove Lipman uh, felt it um, as a member and Jonathan Freeman as a scientist, there is what is called the surplus law in Israel. Two, two laws uh, which uh, hamper uh, forecasting. One has to do with the uh, uh, four member or 3.25% uh, uh, threshold, which means that if you get less than that, it's zero and others uh, get the spoils. And the other has to do with this surplus, where the bigger the party is, um, the better chance it has to, uh, to uh, conduct, to convert more than half a mandate into a full one. It's very complicated, it shouldn't, we shouldn't get into it. But uh, because each member here could, could uh, mean uh, that Netanyahu can or cannot form a government, these uh, margins uh, could finally um, set the score. Indeed, uh, there is a lot of focus on, on whether or not uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, the outgoing uh, Prime Minister, uh, 
is able to form a new government or not. But uh, Knesset member Lippmann, when we're talking about the other candidates, uh, of course, uh, according to all the, the various projections uh, which were conducted prior, uh, the polls conducted prior to uh, this uh, uh, election, it seemed like Yair Lapid of the Yeshatid party is the second uh, largest party, something that may deem quite challenging for him to, to form a government, considering the fact that there is no uh, 61 seats on the center, center-left block of, of the equation. Do you see here right-wing uh, parties? Of course, there is Israel Beitenu, which is a right-wing party, which is uh, alienated from the Netanyahu camp. Uh, other parties which uh, have also uh, plenty of frustrations, uh, including uh, Gidon Saar and, and uh, the person you uh, earlier spoke about, Naftali Bennett, uh, who does not uh, intend or did not intend until the last moment to say where he intends to uh, commit to. How do we, uh, as uh, uh, spectators, look at the current situation? Is there an alternative or not? It's a fascinating development. Israel over the last few decades has very much shifted to the right for a variety of reasons, including failed attempts to try to reach agreements with the Palestinians, which ended up hurting uh, Israel and its security. And despite the fact that there are probably 75, 80 seats in the Knesset out of 120 that would uh, call themselves a right wing on security issues, but you have, as you mentioned, you have Yamina led by Naftali Bennett, you have New Hope led by Gidon Saar, you have Yisrael Beitenu led by Avigdor Lieberman that are all in the uh, anti-Netanyahu camp and they do not want to see him continue as prime minister. So now the question, to get to your point, is can all of those various parties that do not want to see Netanyahu get, uh, be, continue as prime minister find a way to get together? First challenge is definitely going to be ideological, because in order for this to happen, you're going to have to have people who are extremely right wing somehow find a way to sit together with, let's say, the Labor Party, which has members which are very much in the, in the left camp. That's challenge number one. And challenge number two, which might be even more the more difficult one, is who's going to be the prime minister? You have Yair Lapid uh, from a center-left party with the second most number of votes, but many of the other members of that camp, the anti Netanyahu camp, have said they will not support him as prime minister. Will they then support Naftali Bennett at 11 or 12 seats, depending on what we see the results are? Gidon Saar, who has been teetering around single digits, will he be a prime minister candidate? I almost see no way that they could find a way to make that work. And therefore, while there might be large numbers that are anti-Netanyahu, that doesn't necessarily translate into their ability to form a government together. Dr. Freeman, your take on this? Well, I think that uh, the main focus really should be also on what Netanyahu will do himself. We've seen him uh, mention the Mossad chief as someone that he wants to involve in the political process. That We've heard a lot of uh, talk about him being maybe the next uh, leader of the Likud. Uh, we've all seen some talk where Netanyahu will transition into being the president of Israel. Uh, recently, we had Yuli Edelstein, who announced he won't be uh, running for the president of Israel. Uh, that doesn't leave a lot of people who are still remaining. Maybe Netanyahu is the one. Uh, maybe part of what will happen is, if indeed he forms a new government, he'll try to position himself in a way where he also impacts who will be the next uh, leader of his party, but also what he does next, and that is to become the president. Indeed. Mr. Oren, I'd like to touch on something uh, Knesset member Lippmann stated. The majority of Israelis, according to the, the talk in Israel, uh, domestic uh, conversation, is that the majority of Israelis are slowly turning right, even though uh, when I try to look at the situation and to analyze the various trends uh, of uh, and statements made over the course of the various years, it seems that the public perception of what actually means to be right and left is not necessarily the same as it was back in the 90s and prior to that, considering the fact that if we consider that Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, in 2009 acknowledged a two-state solution as a viable option, that is something that uh, 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 the slain prime minister, the assassinated prime minister, um, uh, Yitzhak Rabin, would have never agreed to, considering the fact that he never agreed to a Palestinian state in the first place, including as part of the Oslo Accords. So uh, how do we see this trend actually more of a, a perception or public perception uh, attitude rather than true realities on, on the definition of what is what. 
Well, there is this uh, truism in Israeli politics that only the Likud can. Only the Likud can withdraw from territories because it will not uh, uh, be blamed for um, sacrificing Israel, Israel's interests. Uh, it will be depicted as having uh, fought valiantly until uh, it had no choice because of outside pressure, mostly American, or the fear of a new war on the scale of the Yom Kippur war, war to compromise. The same compromise, if it came from the uh, left or the center, would have been suspect. This is the cliche in Israeli politics, and it is based on the fact that Menachem Begin withdrew from the Sinai, that Ariel Sharon, as head of the Likud, built a fence along, uh, approximately, the Green Line, saying that Israel will expand no more, and Netanyahu, as you said, accepted the two-state uh, solution, and only last summer gave up his annexation hopes in exchange for a normalization pact with the uh, UAE. So this may be so, and there is no challenge right now. There is no initiative. If President Biden comes up with some initiative, we may see the various forces trying to deal with it. But right now, I think our two uh, panel members are right. The common denominator is being anti-Netanyahu. This is on the, the front. Uh, or pro-Netanyahu. It depends which camp you're from. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, uh, for the pro-Netanyahu camp um, is quite unified. There is no problem between Netanyahu and his current coalition uh, partners. One uh, correctly asked, how can the left-wing merits party uh, if it is in the Knesset, we will soon know uh, the indications. How can it cooperate with Gidon Saar, who is far to the right? And the answer is, yes, they can cooperate on an interim emergency COVID-19 uh, response basis. And obviously, this government, which will be led by someone who has less than a majority of the government, not to mention the Knesset. Someone who is in charge of uh, some uh, fifth or um, at most, almost half of the government and will be dependent on his partners. Of course, it cannot survive for the entire four or four and a half years of the Knesset. Its only achievement would be, in their eyes, ousting Netanyahu. Indeed. Uh, Knesset member Lippmann, considering the fact that over the course of the last decade, uh, the, the coalition didn't really change too much. Uh, we had the various uh, parties, uh, the various uh, figures, uh, which uh, if you really look at the coalition uh, makeout, uh, it was uh, yeah, uh, when uh, uh, Israel Beitenu under uh, Avigdor Lieberman pulled out from the coalition uh, that the whole ordeal started to evolve into the, the limbo of elections. Do you think that at this stage uh, where the projection of Israeli society is quite frankly very diverse, very um, ununified, if you will, uh, is there a situation in which we could emerge out of this uh, limbo in, in the next half an hour? <laughs> it, it's very difficult to see that that playing out. Uh, let, let's, let's remember that uh, the issue, as was mentioned from the very beginning of this broadcast, is yes Netanyahu and no Netanyahu. That's the issue. And therefore, uh, as long as Netanyahu continues to be on the stage, uh, that will continue to be the issue. And Israel is quite remarkably divided pretty much right down the middle uh, on that issue as you analyze the polls that we've seen. So the question that we're going to have to see as we see the election results is, despite the fact that it's half-half down the middle, uh, is there one camp or another that's able to somehow manage to squeak out the 61? I have to mention one of the most important variables here right now are the four parties that have been teetering around the threshold whether they can get into the Knesset or not. As has been mentioned, you have to get 3.25% of the vote to get in. It's about four seats. What happens if one, two, three, or four of those parties don't reach that threshold, but they re they had three seats and not the four seats? Now, all of a sudden, those get divided amongst other parties and throughout the spectrum, and that can very, very significantly change the results. I should mention, 
out of anyone in this whole mix, the one who actually has the 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 clearest path, a difficult path, but the clearest path towards 61 might actually be Netanyahu himself, uh, assuming that Naftali Bennett cracks and does join together with him to bring him over the finish line. So I don't think Netanyahu is going anywhere so fast. And as long as he's still on the scene, we're going to be stuck in this cycle and being split down the middle as a country. Dr. Freeman, your take? Well, I think the focus uh, is very much, as has been said here, are you with Netanyahu or against him? But I think, I think it's also, who do you think can deal with the current situation? Is it Netanyahu or somewhere else? Uh, the COVID situation, uh, what's going on with Iran, the new administration in the White House? So I think it is true uh, that many people think, am I with Netanyahu or against him? But I think we'll have to see with these exit polls, whether or not the crowd that says, who can deal with the situation, Netanyahu or any of the other people, whether or not that crowd wins, I think Netanyahu has an edge with that. Mr. Oren, uh, the final analysis? Yes, there, there is uh, this uh, uh, question in American politics, uh, what have you done for me lately? Don't tell me what you have done throughout uh, your four, eight, 12 years. What have you done for me lately? Netanyahu has tried to answer that by saying, I brought you the vaccines. The answer, of course, yes, you brought the vaccines to Ben-Gurion Airport, but the uh, Israeli health maintenance organization, that Kupat Cholim, uh, did the rest. And uh, just like Churchill, at the end of World War II, thank you, uh, Sir Winston, but we'll take it from here. So yes, many people are thankful for what Netanyahu did in the latter part of the COVID-19 crisis, not the first part, not the 10 years when he uh, robbed the health ministry out of resources in his opponent's eyes. And we will have to see what the balance is. Well, we'll uh, remain anxious uh, as we're drawing near to the exit polls. But I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Freeman and uh, Knesset member Littman for being part of today's panel. I'd like to thank Mr. Hogan as well. And I'd like to thank our viewers. And we will see you next time. You just watched TV7 Jerusalem Studio. We encourage you to pray for the challenges raised in today's program. If you were blessed by our production, please consider supporting TV7 Israel. The details of our respective bank accounts for donations from Europe and the United States appear on the screen. Your generosity allows us to continue to serve God's calling, to broadcast content that truly matters through TV7 Israel from Jerusalem.